Okay, welcome back to our next part of our build series. This part of the build series, we're going to focus on the motors that I've chosen to install in this quad. Uh, we'll have a bit of an in-depth look at the motors themselves, and that way you can decide whether you want to buy these motors, you want to buy a low KV version, maybe you want to buy a DWS or something more expensive. But again, these motors were basically the cheapest I could possibly buy for this quad. So let's see how they perform. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have a quick look at is the weight of each motor. Each motor is 11.9 grams. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the bottom half of the motor. Now, the hole spacing is 12 millimeter center to center, and that is the same in all directions, not staggered. The screws are M2. One thing you might be able to see on the camera is underneath the little E-clip here, they've actually got a nylon washer. Now, I've never seen that before. Now, I'm not sure whether they've done that as a basically to take up a bad tolerance, or the idea is that's there because it's nylon, it's going to cause the E-clip to, to spin. There isn't any kind of free play in the motor, so whatever they've done that for is the right, it has done the job. Whether it's the right reason or not, I'm not quite sure. Now, you won't be able to pick it up on the camera, but if you have a really good look inside there, occasionally around the motor, you will actually see they've gone ahead and done dynamic balancing, and there is some kind of balancing mud in there. Now, for the price that we paid for these motors, which was $28 delivered to the door Australian, that's incredible. And to get four motors delivered to the door that have actually been dynamically balanced, that's, that's phenomenal. So, very, very happy with that. The next thing we're going to have a quick look at is the wiring they've chose for these motors. One excellent thing is they've actually gone ahead and put good quality silicon wire on here. You can just see here where the heat shrink is, where they've actually taken the, the wiring from around the motor and they've actually joined it so it's actually good and flexible. In the past I've had cheap motors where they've basically just extended the wires straight out of the coils and that style of wire is incredibly brittle and it just cracks and it's actually a nightmare to solder to. Now the gauge of the cable is 30 gauge and they've given us 70 millimeters in length and the ends are actually pre-tinned for us so it should be nice and easy to solder to. Now you will notice on these motors that there is a black cap version and a red cap version and the difference there is one is counterclockwise and the other one is clockwise. Now that's great because Basically, as your prop spins, the, these are going to tighten themselves up. Now, a lot of people would prefer to use a nylon lock nut and only have the use of one style of motor. Um, but I've you know, decided to go the other way because this is just a little bit lighter. Uh, and it also worked out cheaper to buy them in a set this way than it did to buy the, the four of the one direction. So that's why I've gone with it. Now, when the motors arrived, they actually came individually boxed, so one motor for this ginormous box. They were well packed in bubble wrap, so they all made it here nice and safe. And they also did come with a little baggie with some M2 screws. Now, these M2 screws are five millimeters long, which is actually gonna cause us a little bit of a problem on our frame, because our frame is only two millimeters thick, so that means there is three millimeters exposed, which is too much, and it actually impacts on the wiring. So if you're gonna use uh, these motors on a frame that is two millimeters thick, you're going to need to get yourself some M2 by four screws. These were ridiculously cheap. I think they were like 80 or 90 cents for a bag of 100. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. That was you know, a non-event, but if you don't have them, it will cause you some problems. And having to try and shorten these up on a grinder, yeah, forget that. All right, so now it's time to actually mount these motors to the frame. One thing I have done quickly is I've sat down with the Betaflight um, configurator and just had a look at where the motor numbers are gonna correspond to. Now, motor one on the ESC, motor one on uh, Betaflight, motor two on the ESC, motor, beta, uh, motor two on Betaflight. The only ones we're gonna have to change when we do the wiring is three and four uh, ask about face. So we're just going to need to make sure that when we're wiring it, that we wire that uh, backwards. 
Now the other thing I've done is just put a little C here or a CC that's clockwise and counterclockwise. So when you're going ahead and mounting your motor, these motors are wound the same as each other so you're not going to be damaging the motor if you put them in the wrong place or they spin up in the wrong direction to start with. The only thing that's going to happen is your little black spinner is going to fly off because basically it's going to be undoing itself every time you hit the throttle. Now underneath we've just got our little 4mm by M2 screws. Now the way I go ahead and do this is I always use to, like to use a little bit of Loctite. Now a little bit of Loctite goes a long way and you really don't want to use too much. So the way I do it is a magnet on the end of a screwdriver. Just take your screwdriver, just tap it and you just get the tiniest amount of thread lock on there. It really doesn't do much or doesn't need much. Screw it into the bottom of your motor. Now, when you're doing these motors, or when you're doing these screws, there is a possibility it can move backwards and forwards. So don't go ahead and put the first one in and do it up gorilla tight straight away. Go ahead and get all four in, and then go around and then torque them up, and it'll sit in there beautifully. Okay. So there we go. There's our first motor mounted. Uh, there's no kind of binding, so that's all great. And you can see there's a whole heap of extra wire there from the ESC, uh, from the motor to the ESCs. And let's go ahead and mount the other three. Okay, so I've gone ahead and mounted all four of the motors. Uh, one of the things you will notice is there is just a little bit of bumper room around the outside. So that's a nice little feature. Hopefully that you know if it does get a little bit of a strike, it might uh, save the can. It's not a lot, but it, it's just enough probably not a bad idea at this stage just to go ahead and spin your motors and just feel if there's any, anything binding whether you've got a bad bearing for some reason or maybe one of your screws a little bit too long and actually touching the windings you're much better off doing that now and just have feeling that for yourself okay so what's next basically we've just got to go ahead and solder all these wires to the pads on the ESCs I won't bore you guys with that I'm sure you guys can uh, solder if not let me know and I'll do a YouTube video on how to do that. Uh, one thing you might uh, query is the fact that I've run my cables from the front behind the peg and then back up as opposed to going direct. Now there's a few reasons why I've gone ahead and done that. Uh, in the past when I've gone ahead and run the cables directly to the ESCs, <clears throat> if you have that a little too tight you can get some fatigue failures in the joint because you know it may, may vibrate around. Uh, another reason I've done that is so hopefully it's a little bit tidier the way it sort of comes up under there and that way it's you know nice and tight hopefully it won't snag on things. Uh, but the other major reason I've done it is as opposed to going directly <clears throat> straight to it by going underneath and back up around the frame that will allow me seven or eight millimeters extra cable I don't know if I'm going to like this X frame design I might want to go back to a traditional uh, H frame which might have a slightly larger spacing and by doing this that's then going to allow me to basically unbolt all my ele electronics bolt it into a different frame or I might just want to try a different frame just to see how it handles differently or if I have to p uh, program the PIDs differently so just wanted to give myself a little bit of extra room there so let's go ahead and get some soldering done okay as you can see I have gone ahead and finished up soldering the ESC uh, I'm actually really happy with the fact that I tucked these cables up underneath there's absolutely nothing protruding and there's no chance of snagging anything on a branch or a tree or one of the propellers hitting it so that was really nice the only thing I did struggle is obviously because there's such a tight radius I actually found it much easier to remove the ESC off the standoffs than directly solder the wire and then as I was pushing the, the ESC back down tuck the wires up underneath I'll go back and I'll put some tape over the top of these to make sure these stay down nice and flat. And the other thing I have done is I've just gone ahead and put some 18 gauge wire on here and that's going to solder directly to our flight controller. Alright, that brings us to the end of the ESC and the, the motors and the bits and pieces. So the next thing we're going to do is move on to the hooking up of the flight controller and making up our own custom wiring. Thanks for watching.